Can you hear it with your ears? Can you see it with your eyes? Can you feel it wiggling between your quivering thighs? That thing. That thing. That thing. With James. Once every millennium, something will come along. When you feel it, you will know it, because it's coming on strong. That thing. That thing. That thing. With James. Sit back. Relax. Deep breaths, no stress. Let me come inside your mind. I promise you it won't take long. The change will happen soon. You will feel something so special growing deep within you. That thing. That thing. That thing with James. That thing. That thing. What thing? That thing with James. (laughs) I'm your host. James J. Asher II, that's me. And welcome to episode 60-something. More like episode sexy-something. Why sexy? Because I got some love advice for the boys. For the boys! For the boys! I want to preface this episode with... uh, some assurance that all this stuff you're about to hear is farce. It is satire. It is meant to um, make fun of um, players. Player, player. And uh, so here we go. That This episode is titled James Asher, Understanderer of Women. <laughs> I remember when I was very young, an old man who raised me told me that Asian women had sideways vaginas. They do. (laughs) If you're looking for the clitoris, look inside. It's in there. If you're looking for the G spot, go wherever I hang out, G. (laughs) To get, uh, if you want to, you know, Mac on a strange woman, like go to the library. There's some strange women there, (laughs) like wholeness women. I don't know why, but not everywhere knows about wholeness people. Like outside of where the small town I mostly grew up in, and no one I talk to knows what the fuck I'm talking about when I talk about wholeness people. It's like a type of, uh, uh, like a some type of like evangelical kind of like a religious cult. It's a Christian religious cult, and um, I mean, it's like. I guess like Oklahoma Mormons, but different. Like they don't have any, you know, magic cogs that uh, some fucking dude with the most, (laughs) the most like general, generic, that's the word I'm looking for. Some guy with the most generic name found these fucking magic cogs and uh, made up a religion so he could have multiple wives. Wholeness people aren't like that. It's just... uh, The women are not allowed to wear pants, nor are they allowed to cut their hair. So I remember there was like at least one wholeness girl at my school and I'd see other like older wholeness women around town and you could often spot them at the library, often spot them at the library. And um, usually since they can't wear pants and they can't cut their hair. So usually they will be wearing a long skirt because it can't be a short skirt because they can't show their knees either. And I'm not sure if they can show their ankles because they were always wearing shoes. I don't recall any of them ever wearing any sandals or thongs or flip-flops, although I'm sure there were some wearing thongs underneath those long denim skirts they wore. The skirts were always denim and the hair... No product is ever used in it, and probably no conditioner. It was kind of like Carrie, uh, you know, just long, no makeup allowed. 
and just very plain long hair. And they were always, they always had brown hair. They, they always had this like total fucking Joni Mitchell vibe. And you know how I feel about Joni Mitchell. Actually, you don't because I've never talked about it on here before. But Joni Mitchell sucks. Um, <clears throat> that's just my opinion. And opinions are like nipples or buttholes. Um, but it's buttholes, isn't it? I was trying to make a thing with the nipples, but it's the buttholes, you know, opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one and they all stink. It's not true. What about those who don't have an asshole? And what about those like yours truly, whose asshole smells like rose water? <clears throat> because I, I give myself rose water colonics. Anyway, um... Advice on women. Yeah, when I was very young, I I was told that Asian women had sideways vaginas. <laughs> In retrospect, that old man was right. <laughs> I dated an Asian girl once. Um, she was not from America. And I, she was more like an island. Because it's not necessarily part of Asia, but it was an island island off of it it's a very popular or well-known island um well she actually didn't have a sideways vagina come to find out it was like front to back instead of like leg to leg and um the thing is i kind of already knew this because i looked at like porn i've been I've looked at porn like all my life even since I was little, I fucking know how to use computers. I've known how to use the internet my whole life. It blows my mind seeing people now who don't know how to use the internet because I was using the internet like mm, as soon as I was like physically able to do so. Um, and I remember I used to wait like five minutes to load up pictures of like Carmen Electra and... Um, I can still remember the sound of the modem going, Carmen, Carmen's coming soon, and so are you. <sighs> wow, I'm really disappointed in this episode so far. Let's start over, okay? <clears throat> Welcome to episode sexy something. I'm going to give you some really good women, advice on women. Advice number one. If you're looking for the clitoris, it's inside. I've never found it. I don't know what it looks like or feels like. I imagine it would be hard to look at without like a, like a, you know, camera like doctors have or something or some forceps. Is that what it's called where, you, you know, you pry open an orifice with this thing? Yo, are forceps what they use to pry open holes? Yeah, forceps. <laughs> yeah, so it's like a mythical thing. They say it's like a spongy pearl, and it's on the inside. And if you push it, they pee. Um, that's what happens in the videos. That's what like all the kids are into these days, right? Just like peeing. They call it squirting, but it's actually just piss. <laughs> Someone's just taking a piss. <laughs> you ever watched piss videos? <laughs> uh, I miss having guests on the show. I, I want the disease to go away so I can have guests again. This is hard doing it by myself all the fucking time. It's like I can't think of what to talk about. And I know I'm supposed to be focusing on bad women's advice, but I just keep fucking, I don't even know if I really want to be doing this right now, um, but I'm doing it because, I, well, it, it feels good having done it. So it's like writing kind of like that, you, you know, you don't want to have to do it and you don't want to do it when you're doing it, maybe, but when you're done doing it, 
you're glad you did it. Much like taking, taking women's on the dates. But the thing is, in order to do that, you got to get their phone number first. So here's how to get a phone number. You, you got to go somewhere public, probably the library, because you want to pick up strange. We already established that. Before the restart, we established. Now, wait a second. Who am I to call wholeness people strange? I'm strange to some other people. Some other people are strange to some other people. I have no place to criticize anybody, but it was it was pretty pretty interesting. Like, have you ever heard of wholeness people? I've heard of wholeness people, but so many people I talk to don't know what the fuck they are. Yeah, and the, there was this girl in my school. Yeah, she wore like the long, long denim skirt down to her ankles, tall white socks, white uh, like New Balance sneakers or something, but like something cheaper. The New Balance, New Balance style off-brand sneakers. And um, I don't know, I don't know if they could wear um, any shirt that didn't have buttons because there's usually like a floral button-down blouse involved that's of course tucked into the long denim skirt and um, the the blouse is floral, but I, I wonder if I ever saw one or if I'm just conflating the fashion with that of other people I saw at the library in my small hometown. Um, <laughs> because I'm thinking of just like puppies and kittens on like a really like a neon hot pink shirt with like what's uh, on the front is printed a, floral frame with some big eyed puppies on it or something. And of course it's not a picture of real puppies or real kittens. It's an artist's rendition of it on that, on a t-shirt that on a sweater, you know what I'm talking about? So no jewelry, maybe a watch. Um, and then, you know, they can't really they can't really talk to other guys. Um, I don't know if it's like the uh, Hasidic women or what, but, um, well, I mean, they could talk, they could talk to, to men, but like it was, um, see, I want to, I want to like stereotype it and say they were uncomfortable, but I don't recall any wholeness women ever being uncomfortable talking to men. And that's fine. That's pretty fucking cool. If a person feels uncomfortable talking to another person, like in general, not like a specific person where it's like, I'm sketched out by this specific person, but just like the idea of talking to someone different than you or, or someone who, um, isn't the person telling you that they own you, then uh, it, some people act weird talking to other people. And, you know, it's like, uh, I, um, I've got a husband. He, I'm his. I'm his. I'm his. You know, you're like objectifying yourself and you're like, you're, he's, he owns you kind of a, um, a perspective. It's like, I'm his. I can't, talk to you it's to talk to you is a betrayal you know that kind of a thing but i don't know that necessarily wholeness women did that have you heard of wholeness people why answer me i'm talking to a fucking camera i've been doing this alone for too fucking long i need guests i want to go out and do shit i want to go to concerts uh, i want to be around people again i want to go out and do shit but there's already people out doing shit. And I think they're all assholes because they're the fucking reason more people are getting fucking sick again. You assholes. I saw them like Monday or something. Monday of this week. Was it Monday of this week they lifted shit? Uh, it was last week. Last week they lifted shit. Uh, they, as in the Texas people, the ones who run this fucking show, 
They eased up on the shelter in place. And of course, the mayor of Austin, I, I live in Austin, Texas, the mayor of Austin said, no, 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 fuck that. You, we're still doing shelter in place. But no one, you know, there's a huge chunk of people who aren't doing it because uh, the mayor, his word is kind of uh, trumped by that of the governor. And uh, the governor is a fat, dumb bitch. Greg Abbott, fat, dumb, dummy head and and greedy. All right. And if any of you watching or listening disagree, you can go fluff off. All right. You mother fluffers. You disagree with me. Go find another podcast. I don't care. I'm being totally serious right now. I'm most definitely not being satirical. I am not being parody. I am not being uh, deconstructive. I'm not being silly. I'm being serious. Fluff off. Get a brush. Get a hair dryer. Get a sheep. Fluff off. Go off. Fluff. Go off, queen, and fluff. If you disagree, Greg Abbott, you lifted this shit too early. And now there's a bunch of dumb jackasses out. I was driving across the bridge and I, and on the other bridge, I saw all fuck ton of people walking across the bridge as if there were no pandemic still going on. And I saw all fuck ton of people out on the river that they call a lake here, but it's a fucking river <laughs> out there floating and paddle boarding and enjoying life. Fluff all of you. You're supposed to be inside. You know? You motherfuckers out at picnics. You motherfucker that I talked to on the phone yesterday. I was talking to this, this landlord lady. Um, and yesterday, I called. I just called this number to get the address of this place that I walked by. And I took a picture of like the number they have because they've got a two bedroom, two bath that I certainly am not moving into because I certainly can't fucking afford it. Uh, they're looking to fill a two bedroom, two bathroom unit. Um, and I, I was walking by this place and it was really cool, like mid century kind of apartment complex. And, uh, I just got a picture of the number to call. And so I called her up yesterday, this lady and uh, I talked to her and, you know, she was trying to sell me on the thing. And I told her right off the bat, I am just uh, passively looking, not really looking. I just called because I wanted the address. She bent my ear for 30 minutes, giving me the sales spiel, the spiel. I already told you, woman, I can't afford this place. She keeps doing the spiel. Keep doing the spiel. And I just say, I I. I can't afford this place. She keeps trying to sell me on it. Okay. Bending my ear, talking about the neighborhood as if I didn't know the fucking neighborhood. When I already told her I knew the fucking neighborhood, I know the fucking neighborhood. I live near it. I've lived in the city for, it's not even a city. I've lived in this town for, uh, like a lot longer than I thought I would. And, uh, that's kind of how it happens. People get stuck in Austin that people just kind of, they come here intentionally, but don't want mean to stay super long, or they just kind of wind up here, and then they just end up being here for a lot longer than they thought they would. Well, I'm fucking here a lot longer than I thought I would be, and, uh, you know, the uh, pandemic isn't making my, uh, my delusion, my self-delusional promise that I'd be moving to Los Angeles or New York City. It's making that prospect, certainly the New York City one, this pandemic is making that, uh, you know, that delusional plan uh, seem even less viable than it had already. Um, you know, life just fucking chews you up and shits you out wherever it wants to, however it wants to, doesn't it? I feel like we're all, we've all got trauma from being born. Like imagine the fucking like just total trauma it must be to be like a fetus, get like pushed out of this dark, 
damp hole uh, into a bright place or into like a like a bath or something if you got a midwife. But just imagine like being inside inside your mom and then getting pushed out and you're in this place you didn't even ask to be uh, in, in a time, in a location, uh, surrounded by people in a neighborhood under contexts that you didn't even ask for. You didn't even like choose. It's just like, Oh, yep. 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 You are here now. (laughs) Good luck. And so you got to fucking figure out how to live life. And you have this idea of what life, what you want it to be. But usually that's a lot different than what it is. And what it is, is what it is. After all, what is, 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 is the isness of what is. So what is happening is what is happening. Not what you wish were happening. Not what you want is hap- to happen. What's happening is what's happening. And you got to work within whatever, you know, is happening. You know what I mean? Like, you got to work with where you're at in the time you're at. Like, you can't, you you can make predictions, you can make plans and shit, but uh, you're not just going to, like, magically jump there. Like, you got to go through a, a hoop a second, a minute, an hour, a day. You got to go through hoops. And one of those hoops is getting a lady's number at the library. Say you walk in and you're looking for a, you're in the Dewey Decimal System. You're looking for a book on birds because you're a bird watcher. And uh, you're looking for a golden oriole. While eating Oreos, you snuck them in in your back pocket. Just the Oreos, like unpackaged. You stuffed the, the direct cookie into your pocket. And they're all crushed because your hot, sweaty ass crushed them as you sat in the hard plastic seat of the public metropolitan bus to the library where the wholeness people are. And you're going in there and uh, you're looking for a book on birds. And you're in the Dewey Decimal System because that's where you go to find books on birds because it is what we call nonfiction and while you're looking for this book on birds written by say renowned bird author nathaniel montopathy mantowitz the third you spot a fine lady wearing a purple sweater with a little little daisies little white daisy frame it's like got a print on the front of that purple sweater and she's got like a little daisy chain frame printed and then inside the daisy chain frame is just a little portrait of a couple puppies with big motherfucking doe eyes why puppies would have doe eyes because they are vicious they will bite out the eyes of a doe and put it over their eyes so there will be puppies with doe eyes, but it'll be cute. And uh, they're, they're in a field. One's jumping, the other one's on its back, and they've got these like little dog smiles with their tongues wagging out. And, um, and they're, they're just playing in the grass. And the lady's wearing a, the lady's wearing a, a long denim skirt. Um, however... This, this lady's not wholeness. She's just rocking the long ankle length denim skirt. She actually has a Karen haircut. I understand Karen is a derogatory term, but I don't give a fluff. She's got the Karen hair where it's the long swoop bangs in the front. And then the back is kind of short and spiky. And, um, and she's, this lady is also rocking because she's a kinky freak. Doc Martin boots. Yeah. Yeah. Purple dog 
puppy print sweater with the daisy chain frame, long ankle length denim skirt, a Karen haircut, um, lipstick on her teeth, <laughs> brown eyes, the hair's brown too, pasty white skin, a little ruddy at the cheeks because she's got rosacea <laughs> and Doc Martin boots. How are you going to get her number? You stick around after this. I'll be back after the short break because this is for the boys. It's fucking stupid. And I'm back. I realized during the break that I didn't really finish the story about the lady I was talking, uh, talking to over the phone yesterday. She's a landlord and, uh, near the end when I was finally managing to just wrap up the far, far, far too uh, informative conversation. Um, She told me one last thing. I was like, have a great day. And she said, oh, I will. I'm cooking and I'm, I'm, and uh, people are coming over for a dinner party tonight. And I didn't want to say anything, but I, well, I did want to say what I wanted to say, but I didn't say it because I didn't want to dare uh, poking that tiger, or that tigress. I didn't want to talk to her anymore. Um, I, I had already talked to her far more than I wanted to. I just wanted the fucking address. And uh, she gave me so much more information than I ever needed. Well, um, near the end, she said she was cooking to yesterday. I'm cooking today and people are coming over for the first time for a dinner party. And I just wanted to tell her that's a really irresponsible and bad idea. And I already didn't, you know, get super smart. I I didn't get the impression that you're a super smart person, but now you just kind of confirmed my suspicion that you're a fucking moron, which why, 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 why should I think otherwise? She's a landlord and that's her only job. I know because she told me. And and the thing is, being a landlord is not a fucking job. That's just being paid uh, to let people live on a piece of the earth, the piece of the surface of the planet paying you. You know, you let people live there. And you get them to pay you. And you can kinda, kinda charge whatever the fuck you feel like charging. Um, you know, I get emails every now and then from my landlord. I'm not going to say his name. But um, it's a pretty generic name. A generic man's name. Well, occasionally he will send out an email to everyone in my uh, boutique apartment complex. And he will say, the water is too expensive. Check to make sure your toilet is not running or maybe just don't take so many showers. He's literally said that a couple times at least. Just don't take so many showers. Um, Now the thing is here, and I'm, it's been like this in every apartment complex I've lived in. Um, every tenant gets charged, you know, uh, everyone gets an equal um, fraction of the whole of the water bill for the whole building, or, or in this case, a whole small complex. And we all pay an equal fraction. And, um, and when... I get those emails from my landlord talking about how it's really expensive. He doesn't, it's, I'm greatly abridging the, what he says in these emails, but it's very clear that he views it as he is the one who is paying the water bill. That is to say, sure, sure. He's writing a check for the water utility. However, that check does not come from his fucking money. He does not work 
for that money. Everyone in, who lives in this apartment complex, we are the ones who have to fucking pay for that. Straight up. He views it as it's his money, it's his labor that's paying for the water that he doesn't even use. It's us. We are working and it's our fucking money. And he doesn't seem to quite acknowledge that. Although I'm sure deep down he fucking well understands. He's not paying for it. We're the ones paying for it. Landlords suck. End of story. Now, you're back at the library. You're looking for that, that book written by Tom Hubris the Fourth, And uh, you're looking for information on a golden oriole. And you spot a fine half-wholeness Karen in the same aisle, in the same, looking at the same stack of Dewey Decimal pieces of uh, published work. You spot her. She spots you and quickly turns away. Quick, what do you do to get her phone number? Step one, do the opposite of what your fucking instinct is. Your instinct may be to introduce yourself. Yeah. Say your name. Get her name. Give her a compliment. Chat for a little bit. Um, see if she would like to get a coffee or perhaps a coffee cake uh, at a later in the day or at a later date. And then perhaps exchange numbers if they're comfortable. But that's that may be your instinct. But you need to do the opposite of that for you to actually bad the babe. All right. So that's step one. Ignore your your uh, your instinct. Step two. Don't say anything to her. Don't even look. Just keep going on about your business, all right? And really commit to it. Don't look. Like, don't even smile. Just, like, pretend that that the, the half-wholeness Karen doesn't exist. Um, and, and if we're talking in quite literal terms, half-wholeness Karen, the one I'm talking about, does not exist. She is a... Um, just a figment of something I imagined uh, for this for this scenario for this story. Half wholeness, Karen. Let's name her Karen. She starts to leave. What do you do? Your instinct is to, you know, try to get her attention and then talk. No, no, no. Keep looking for that book. Karen leaves. Now what do you do? You don't have a number. You just cry because you're going to be alone for a long fucking time. Maybe your entire life. And that's how you get a number. Now, another way you can get a number is by going to a bakery or a deli. And they usually have some numbers. You'll even get a letter out of that too, like A5 or or uh, 70, 74L or something on the little tape thing. That's how you get a number. Or, or you could uh, go to a concentration camp in the past. And I don't recommend that because that's really fucking, um, it's not a, not a happy place. Um, so once you have the woman's number, you got to, you got to go on a date. And how do you behave on a date? You behave like a pig. Because, you know, everyone, all the, all the ladies say like, oh, I just want a, I want a nice guy, like a person, like a human being with some type of personality. Um, preferably someone who's not abusive. They say they want that, but they really want the opposite. They want a douchebag who's going to treat her like shit. So that's what you got to be. So you're going on a date to some fancy mid, mid-price mid French restaurant. What do you wear? An affliction t-shirt. Shave your head bald. And um, get some Oakley shades, but wear them backwards. 
So the arms are still on your ears, but um, the lenses are like on the back of your head as if you had eyes growing out at the back of your head. And um, you just make sure it stays in place in your in your neck fat and your back, uh, your back skull fat. You've got, you know, you've got those like rolls on, on the, the fat rolls on the on the back of your head and your neck. You tuck the nose rest of the Oakley glasses into the crevasse uh, betwixt two of those jelly rolls, and your Oakley glasses will stay in place on the back. Show up 10 minutes late. You don't text you're on your way or anything. You haven't talked, you haven't spoken since you established uh, the place and time of having uh, to have said date, all right? That's the last time you spoke to your date. And then you show up 10 minutes late and they look really worried uh, because they, well, they, they, you walk in and they look worried. Um, maybe they're just like staring at their phone, trying to hide that they're worried, trying to hide from the world, trying to hide from themselves, just staring into their phone. Um, and then you come, you come in and a great wave of relief washes over their face. And that's a good thing because then, you know, you showed up late and it's fucking rude but she likes it because you created an air of mystery and an air of, of uncertainty and nothing makes the ladies harder than uncertainty. You ever heard of inverted nipples? It's nipples that skate inverted, you know, they skate goofy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Tony Hawk, you know, you know, you get on like the fucking 360 roundabout on the on the uh, on the in the scoot scoot board. And when you're upside down, you're inverted. And when you have nipples while upside down, it means you've got inverted nipples. And um, you know, some women have that, and that's because they're bats. They hang from the ceiling. Congratulations. You found yourself a vampire. That's fucking hot. Is there blood? Is there going to be blood play? Fuck, please. Yes, blood play. Yes, let's do. <laughs> Get an upside down invert with the blood play. Take them on a date to a French place. Leave them hanging. Leave them uncertain. And then show up. And don't talk much. Just w when you walk up, instead of saying like, hi, oh, hi, I'm sorry, I'm late. I've got excuses. Oh, I sent you a few text messages that I was stuck in traffic. You, instead of saying that, you just walk up and go, eh. and then you sit down, have poor posture, do it. Poor posture. Just slump in your chair. Um, pick up a menu and just look at the menu. Don't look at your date. Look at the menu. And uh, why? Because it creates more of that air of uncertainty of does, does your date want to continue the date with you or not? They probably want to end it. But you're going to surprise them because you're a player. Play a player, and and uh, this is how you play the game. You don't look at your date. You just look down at the menu, and then a waiter comes up, and, and you go like, hey, can I have a water? And she's like, the waiter's like, it's a female lady, like, oh, yeah, you, you want a lemon with the water? And you go, yeah, I want a lemon. And then... And then you check out the waiter's butt as they walk away. And then you look at your date and say, the waiter's got a nice butt. And then your date's like, oh. so what did you, uh, what are you going to eat? And then you're like, I don't know. And then you go back to staring at the menu until your date gets up and leaves. Boom. You got ditched. You didn't get ghosted. You got ditched.
She's mad. She's walking off. She's going home. And she's thinking about you all along because she's pissed off at what a dick you are. You fucking asshole. You dick. You're a douchebag. She don't want to talk to you no more. But she can't stop thinking about you. And that's what you did. That's what you did. If you want to work your way into a loving relationship, you got to coerce. All right? You got to coerce. You got to plan. You got to strategize. You got to play games. And most of all, you have to coerce. Gaslight if you need to. Do whatever it fucking takes. But break the person down until they just don't want to leave you anymore. It's, uh, what's it called? It's the uh, Stockholm Syndrome of love. And, uh, you know, getting your date to walk out on you is a good way to start. Because they're going to be thinking about you. And you're just going to stay there and enjoy your meal. And bang that waiter. (laughs) And then afterwards, you're going to go home. And then... Let a few days pass. Actually, no, no, no. Let one day. No, 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 no. The next day, show up at your date's place of work. Okay? By this point, you will not have had enough actual conversation with the person to learn where they work. But you just find that shit out because, you know, you're a stalker. And uh, you show up. And uh, you go, hey, babe, babe, I'm sorry. I'm just, I've got a lot of darkness. I'm broken. And then, and then she'll be like, oh my God, I got to fix you. It's like my mothering instincts. Ah. And then, and then you're like, yeah, I want to be your son and your daddy. And she'll be like, oh. God, yay. Um, and then you get married and then you have a divorce. I'm going to take a break. And I'm back with lessons on uh, how to have sex with strangers. I'm talking like the actual thing, like the do of the do of doing it, you know, pounding. Um, where, where can you meet strangers? They're everywhere. Go to another country. Don't learn the language. Don't figure out the customs. Accost some strange woman. Ask her for, solicitate, solicit her for sexual intercourse and she'll say, Como? And, uh, you know, just be, be, uh, be an American, you know? America, you're number one. You're literally number one. You've literally got the most cases of COVID-19 and the most deaths. America, number one. We're exceptional, exceptionally awful. Okay. Um, so you can meet strangers there. You can meet strangers at a bar. You can meet strangers at a dog park. You can meet strangers at a club. You can meet strangers at the library. You can meet strangers at the grocery store. But the best place to meet strangers is at the hospital. Go to the psych ward. That's where you're going to feel feel that you have found the real people. Why? Because you have. Because the people in the psych ward, they have sloughed off the dead skin of status quo. You know, they've shedded uh, traditional decorum. You know, they're fucking real. They're being them, their real selves. They're letting, letting their tay shine. Your tay is like your soul, man. Um, You go there, you pick up a stranger. Now, as for doing the sex stuff, um, don't, like, if you have to put your hands somewhere on a lady's body when you're making out with them, don't just keep them on your lap. Like keep them at your side and just sit there. 
do not turn or anything. Just sit there. If you're like on the side of a bed, if you're at a chair, if you're sitting on the floor, um, if you're sitting on a couch, just sit up, stock straight. Um, and don't turn your head. Just look forward. Have have your body at 90 degree angles and just sit there and look forward in the direction you're looking. You do not want to turn your eyes or your head or any other part of your body. Um, and then they will like, you know, do stuff like with their lips. It's gross. And then, um, and then it comes time for like the petting, the heavy petting, get a, uh, St. Bernard, get a great Dane and pet the puppy, uh, the dog. You want the full grown dog because they're heavier and you pet them. The heavy petting. Once you've heavily petted for a long time, you got to find the clitoris. Not on the dog, on the human. And that's located inside the vagina tube. There's, it's actually pretty complicated. It's different parts. Um, that's part of why women uh, get hysteria is uh, because their downstairs are so complicated, everything else becomes complicated. That's science, you know? Um, I'd like to remind you that this is farce. This is not real. I don't actually think this stuff. But I do. Oh, what if it's a farce of a farce? <laughs> Sucker, you don't know. You don't know because I created doubt in your mind. And, and now I'm in there. I've come inside your mind. And we're going to have a podcast baby. All right. And that podcast baby is going to be fucked up. Anyway, I'm going to teach it some weird shit. <laughs> like up is down, you know, or like the color blue is actually called Maple Thorpe. In, in that way, not Maple Thorpe, Maple Thorpe. So then when, when your podcast baby grows up and goes off to kindergarten, they get a book and it says blue but your bo your podcast baby can't fucking read. What are you stupid? Um, but it knows words. It knows some words that you taught it. And the teacher points at the color blue that we know is blue and says, "What is that color?" And the kid says, "Maple Thorpe." <laughs> It'll have a hairy vestigial, ch heavy, uh, hairy, a heavy hairy vestigial vest vestigial tail and um back to the love making anyway um the clitoris is on the inside and it's like on the back like when you push you can feel um like the 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 anal sphincter and the tube going up to the intestines like if you push you can feel the other hole like the other tube like there's one tube and it's got a wall it's pressing against the other tube and you know you got the right hole if the tube that you're not in if you're pressing on it and you feel the other tube and you feel there's like lumps of poop in it that's when you know you got the right place you look for the lumps of poo um and, and it's on the back side and it's kind of hard it's like a pebble um and cellularly cellularly the cellular structure structure of the uh the clitoris is stone it's a uh, bio stone and um you you rub it like um like have you ever messed with a what are those think pads those those uh, really expensive laptops they've got the black keyboard and in the middle of the keyboard there's this little like textured red rubber nub and you move it around and that moves the mouse around. Uh, you do that to the, uh, to the biostone clitoris on the inside, on the back wall. And um, you have to follow the moves of the original Doom um, as if you were doing a speed run. Um, like you're not, you're not looking for, for uh, in hidden rooms yet. 
you have to first get used to moving it like you're doing a speed run through every level. Take a break um, when the new a new level is loading. Um, but just get used to the speed run movements. Memorize it. Study it. Be it. Become one with it. Internalize it so you don't have to think about it. It's just muscle memory. It's natural. Then you can move on to the next step and factor in the hidden rooms with the, um, you know, the, uh, the items that are really good, get the hidden rooms. And that's how you get a lady to piss on you. Cause that's what kids are into these days. Dar she blows. Huh? Um, but don't do that for too long. You want to, you want it to be dry. Um, like you, you, you don't even find the clitoris. Like it doesn't even appear until you're, or you've already been married for five years. And by that time you have no, there's like no touching with your, with your, with your wife. Don't touch, you know, you just read, you just sit and read books. And then she's like <sighs> being fucking crazy again. You don't know what the fuck you did wrong. She's pissed at you. Like, whatever, bitch. <sighs> well, before that, like, she can do some foreplay to you, but don't, don't, don't try to do any foreplay to her, such as 69ing, finging, um, licking, tweaking, flicking, leaking, even. Don't do these things. Uh, because, well, it's, it's a little forward. Um, and you're not, you don't know each other that well yet, but she can suck your dick. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then it comes time for the, the sex. You lay on your back or they lay on their back. Those are the two moves. If you're on your back, you do like a pencil. You want your body to be stock straight arms down at your side legs straight kneecaps pulled up kneecaps pulled up uh feet flexed um and then just like squeeze your your ab abdomen and your male kegel muscles for your man man vagina and um you want to pop your testicles up into their sockets um for full um, hardness. That's what you have to do. Uh, you can do that with your fingers actually. Um, until you have the muscles trained, use, use your fingers, get used to the sensation of popping your testicles into their sockets. Um, later you will need some forceps to pry open your butt and, uh, to reach in and then push down. If you push down, you got to push the poop up back in out of the way um and then you feel on the back wall on the bottom like you'll feel your testicles up in the sockets just pop them out uh all three of them and then uh and then you're golden but anyway yeah if you're on your back be stock straight and don't move don't even look just look straight ahead at the ceiling or if you're on top and they're on their back with the, like the legs apart you do the same move. You just stock straight, and but you're laying down and don't move. Uh, and then by the time she looks bored, you will know you're done. Congratulations. Congratulations. You just uh, accomplished the most beautiful act in existence. You just made love. And that's the advice so uh, do with it what you will. Be sure to become a donor um, if you like this piece of shit podcast at patreon.com slash that thing with James. Uh, there you can find some uh, bi-weekly. Actually, they're more like bi-questioning weekly. Uh, very short stories that I write. Everyone's different. Uh, subscribe to this show. Yeah, rate it, review it, write a comment, 
Share it. All of you, share it. Um, uh, I want a guest. I'll, I'll, I'll see you next week. Bye. I love you. I guess. Bye.